Hi, my name is Scott Vaughn, and this is a video for MAT 106 Math Applications. It's a video on Poissier's Law. I've got four examples that I'm going to do here. Poissier's Law uh, is a formula that um, relates the fluid flow rate in a cylinder, for a tube, for example, in a blood vein or artery and we can calculate what the flow rate is depending on the pressure differences between the ends of the artery or between the ends of the cylinder. Um, we also need to know the viscosity of the fluid which is typically given in um, pascal seconds or millipascal seconds. It's a measure of the thickness of the fluid. And we also need to know the length of the cylindrical tube. It would be some length that often would be given in meters or centimeters. And the flow rate is the volume per unit of time. For example, it could be cubic centimeters per second. So we'll work with that formula and do a couple of examples here. First question. A fluid flows through a cylindrical pipe. What happens to the flow rate of the fluid in each of the following circumstances? Question A the pressure difference only between the ends of the tube is doubled. If I doubled the pressure difference, what happens to the flow rate? Well, I could say I expect the flow rate to increase, but I could be a little bit more precise. And I'll demonstrate how I could show that. I'll say that the flow rate is pi times, if I doubled the pressure difference, I'll substitute in 2 times p, then the radius still raised to the power 4, the radius isn't changing. This is 8 times, this is pronounced eta, the, the viscosity, and it's not changing here, and the length is not changing. So the conclusion is, you can take this factor of 2 out in front, just say 2 times pi times the pressure difference times the radius to the fourth power, everything divided by 8 times eta times L. That's just 2 times the flow rate because all these other factors are in the formula that you see here, Poissier's formula. So the answer is flow rate is doubled. All right, now in question B, suppose if only the radius is doubled, what would happen to the flow rate? We'll do the same thing, same kind of work. The effect on the flow rate is we have pi times p, and now it's the radius that's doubled. So I'm going to substitute 2 times the radius where I had the radius originally in the formula. I'll make it 2 times the radius. Divide that by 8 eta L. Now we have pi times the pressure. Now this is 2 to the power 4 times r to the power 4. What's going to happen here is you'll get times 16. That's 2 to the power 4. And also r to the power 4. All divided by 8 eta L. Now we could cancel 8 and 16, but I'm not going to do that because I want to write the original flow rate and a factor times the original flow rate. And of course there's a 16 factor that's introduced here by doubling the radius. And so that 16, that factor of 16 can go out in front and we have pi times pressure times the radius to the fourth power over 8 eta L and pi times p times r to the fourth over 8 eta l, well that's exactly the original flow rate. So by doubling the, f the radius, I've actually increased the flow rate by 16 times. This is 16 times the original flow rate. So the answer is... The flow rate is now 16 times greater as a result of doubling the radius. 
Okay, I've squeezed one last question on here on this page. What if the viscosity only is halved? Let's follow the same process that's been working before. We'll say pi times p times the radius to the fourth power over 8. Now half of eta, we're going to get half of the viscosity. So we'll just say 1 half times eta times L. This is times, of course, all of it. Well, when you have a 1 half factor in the denominator, I'm going to flip that to be a times 2. Of course, I don't want to cancel with the 8 because of the conclusion that I can make here is based on writing the formula as it was originally uh, for the original flow rate to compare the new flow rate compared to the old flow rate um, as a result of just these changes in for example here in viscosity so it's the one half on the bottom that produces a two factor here in front two times pi times p radius to the fourth everything over 8 eta L. So that's two times the original flow rate and the conclusion now is doubled the flow rate. Alright, let's move on to question number two. Question two says blood flows through an artery. Suppose with exercise, the artery increases in radius by 5%. What percent change will occur in the flow rate? Well, rather than doubling the radius, we're going to make the radius 5% bigger. So, by making the radius 5% bigger, what, what that means is that you could take 1.05 times the radius. That's a 5% increase in the radius because that is 105% of the radius and we're replacing the original radius with 105% of the radius, a 5% increase in the radius. This is why it's in the same homework as all that material on finance because it's sort of the same math. In fact what's happening here is it's sort of like a a 5% compounded increase. It's compounded four times in a sense because of this formula uh, we're getting a compounded 5% increase in our flow rate. Uh, due to the 5% increase uh, in the in the radius. So uh, all this is divided by, and also we have some uh, nursing students taking Math 106. I thought this would be appropriate. So now we have, we, we what we need to do is take 1.05 to the power 4, just like the 2 we had before. You're just going to need a calculator for this one. 1.05 to the power 4. Now you get about 1.21, so 1.05, I'm sorry, 1.05 to the power 4 is roughly, well, I see 1.2155, and it goes on from there, so I didn't really put in the directions how precise to be. And so I think what I'll do is I'll just round it off to two places in my final answer. So I'm going to say this is pretty close to 1.22. Right? So I'll have pi times p times 1.22 r to the fourth over 8 eta l. You see that I have a 1.22 factor that I can take out. Just like I took a factor of 2 in the previous example, number 1, I'm taking a factor of 1.22 in front. I have pi, p, radius to the fourth. These are all factors in the original formula. You can see up here. So this is 1.22 times the flow rate. It's all these factors pi, p, r4, 8, eta l, all those are the f values in the original formula for the flow rate. So this is 1.22 times the flow rate. That means that you're going to get a 22 percent increase because you're multiplying by 1.22. If you, if you know, in number one when you saw two times the flow rate, that was a doubling of the flow rate. Actually, that's a hundred percent increase if you double it. This is a 22 percent increase. 
So the answer is 22% increase. Number three says blood flows through an artery. Suppose that cholesterol causes a 10% decrease in the radius of the artery. What percent change will occur in the flow rate? Same math, same process. Similar also with finance in the following way. A 10% decrease means I'm going to get 90% of the radius. So multiply, so replace the radius by 90% of the radius. A multiplier of 0.9 will give me 90% of the radius and therefore a 10% increase, a 10% decrease. That's replacing the original radius. Now the radius is 90% of its original value. All of this is divided by 8 at L because that's the formula. And now we have to do 0.9 to the fourth power on the calculator. 0.9 raised to the 4. Say 0.6. Five, six. Let's round off to two places there again. So this is pi p, and I'll say 0.66 roughly r to the four, because both the 0.9 and the r are both being raised to the power four. It's repeated four times, right? Divide by the eight eta l. We don't want to cancel here because we want to leave the formula in its original form so we can recognize the change in the flow rate. So there's a 0.66 factor that you can bring out in front. That means 0.66 times the flow rate. But if you have 66% of the flow rate, then you actually have a 34% decrease. Right? Because 100% of the original flow rate take away 66%. That means like a 34% drop. Right? If you only have 66% of the flow, then you've lost 34%. Right? Last one. Blood flows through an artery. Suppose with medication, the viscosity of the blood is reduced by 20%. What percent change will occur in the flow rate? So we'll follow through the same procedure. Radius isn't changing. This time I have a 20% decrease in the viscosity. So I'm going to have 80% of the viscosity. So I'm going to say 8 times 0.8 eta times the length. Now that means I have pi pressure radius to the fourth power, everything divided by, well let's put this 0.8 factor in front, 8 eta, I don't want to multiply 0.8 times 8 because I want to write this in terms of the original flow rate, so this is a 1 over 0.8 times the flow rate. There's a factor of 1 on top and 0 0.8 in the denominator. You can write that in front of the original flow rate as 1 over 0 0.8 times F. 0 0.8 in the denominator, 0 0.8 is 4 fifths, and so I'm going to write it as 5 fourths. In fact, actually, maybe the better thing here is if you did it on the calculator, you're going to see 1.25, and that's actually putting it in decimals convenient here because I'm going to percentage in the final answer. So this 1 divided by 0 0.8 is 1.25 times the flow rate. So the answer is there's a 25% increase. Alright, that's the end of the video. I hope this was helpful.